Hi, I'm Chris Hochstetler. Welcome to Stewart Museum, home of the Prairie Pioneer here in Grand Island, Nebraska. We are a 206 acre living history museum filled with magnificent structures, including the one that's behind me, which is the Leo Stewart Building. And we're here today to talk a little bit about the Leo Stewart Building as part of a series that we will present to you about our property, about what we do, and how we help you experience history. The Leo Stewart Building is spectacular and it is significant. It's an iconic structure and it is a typical, fairly typical uh, piece or um, example of what we call the international style of architecture. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the international style of architecture. This, this museum was designed by Edward Durrell Stone uh, and he is a noted uh, iconic figure in the world of architecture and, and, and a gifted artist. And I wanna spend some time talking about the Stewart building and his architecture. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the elements of international style architecture and, and a little bit about the history of international style architecture. And also perhaps Edward Durrell Stone's slight departure from, from traditional international style uh, architecture. International style architecture was really encompassed a period of say about 1920 to about 1970. And it was a, it was a vital period as the artistry and architecture changed across the entire world. Uh, Edward Durrell Stone was a, a huge advocate of the international style of architecture, which actually can be seen as a subset of what's called modernism. Um, which actually began, if you think about it, in, in the time period was from about, say, 1901, 1902. It was through, through World War I, and then it really picked up steam post-World War I. Uh, architecture always seems to reflect the times, and there's been some, some thoughts that, you know, maybe this was a, an expressive political movement that came out post-Industrial uh, Revolution and post-World War I to really kind of emphasize certain things. And so the elements that are traditionally found in international style architecture are really emphasizing the structure as volume versus mass. So you'll see these kind of expansive structures uh, and, and, and they're actually constructed with kind of thin planes of, of uh, material, uh, really emphasizing kind of the industrial feel. So you'd see big expanses of concrete and glass and steel. Uh, really emphasizing that volume versus the mass. You'll also see a, a real regularity in the facade itself. So you'll see a lot of repetition in this door building. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about the, the repetition. Uh, you see a lot of the use of square, of, of the square and the angles. You'll see a lot of concentric squares, if you wanna consider it that way, squares within squares. Um, and you'll see that regularity, that regularity throughout this architecture. And you see it in the, in the portico here, you see it in the columns, you see it in the, in the way that the building is set itself on the grounds. Um, the roof is filled with squares. Uh, at, at the top of each column, you'll see those concentric squares that I spoke about kind of emanating out. You'll see that in the interior of the structure as well. And then the final element of of um, international style architecture that is most noted is you'll see a significant lack of ornamentation on the facade itself and actually throughout the building really kind of emphasizing that industrial feel and and once again in social movement and in politics there's this there's this effort to say well that that's an expression by the artist or the architecture to kind of move away from from the, the, the rise of communism and fascism and all those things that we knew uh, were happening between World War I, World War II, and immediately post-World War II. So we're inside the Leo Stewart building now, and, and I want to talk a little bit uh, about the inside of this, of this uh, magnificent building, this museum, but also a little bit about why it's so important to us as Nebraskans. I'll start with that first. So first of all, this is the only existing Edward Durrell Stone building uh, in Nebraska. Uh, and that's, uh, that's huge for us because he was such an iconic figure. Um, this building particularly is magnificent and, and it actually was uh, designed in 1960. Edward Durrell Stone came out here to Grand Island, Nebraska. 
uh, came to the prairie. Uh, there was a snowstorm going on, uh, and, and this is the perfect place for a building of such nature, and Edward Durrell Stone probably saw that. Uh, if you ever get a chance to come here, uh, perch yourself out uh, on the uh, western side of our building and watch the sun rise come up over the building, and you'll see why this, this building and this structure and this architecture actually feels like it just belongs on the prairie. Inside the building, there's perhaps more of an emphasis on elegance than there is utilitarianism. And that's also a, a hallmark of not only the international style architecture, but Edward Durrell Stone. You have these wonderful kind of curving stairwell uh, staircases in here that, that almost shout uh, indifference to the more angular square. <laughs> Uh, components of the architecture and it, it really is extraordinary and not atypical of Edward Durrell Stone's design. You see the same features in, in buildings in Puerto Rico that he designed in, in the Art Center in Puerto Rico. You see uh, the U.S. Embassy in, in New Delhi, which he designed in 1954, is almost a mirror image of the Stuhr Museum and it is a, a noted worldwide iconic structure. In fact, Edward Durrell Stone designed the Kennedy Center. He designed the Museum of Modern Art. Um, and an interesting story, you know, he, he, he really picked up the international style architecture in 1932 when he visited then the Museum of, of, of Modern Art before he designed the new one uh, and, and actually met with a couple of guys who were doing a presentation there, uh, Henry Hitchcock and, and Philip um, Johnson and they were introducing this style of architecture to the United States at the time. He fell in love with it. What you have here, as I said, a rather less than utilitarian, um, perhaps for a museum. We have the big fountains, four big square fountains that keep that continuity of those, of those concentric squares, so to speak, throughout. You'll see uh, a wide open uh, gallery to the um, almost atrium feel to it, to the second floor uh, with those squares moving up. And then as you approach the skylights and the roof above, you'll see those re that repetition of squares that is noted in this particular architecture. Uh, it is ac actually just a beautiful building. Uh, once again, emphasizing the industrial nature of the time, you'll see the exposed piping, although it's not obtrusive because it's the same color as the rest of the building. You will see a, a, a lack of color, which is kind of noted in modernism and as well as international style architecture. But that repetitive uh, feel of the square almost gives you a sense of comfort and consistency in the structure. So welcome to the second floor of the Leo Stewart building. Uh, this is the, this Edward Durrell Stone building here on our property is where we actually house our permanent exhibition. So you can come here and you can experience uh, rotating exhibits, you can experience wonderful artwork, and it's one of the things that makes Stewart Museum such a fantastic place is that we have this marvelous architecture as kind of the centerpiece when you first come in Stewart Museum as well as the living history and portion of our museum. We can uh, exhibit our permanent collection in a, in a very museum-like setting in an iconic architectural structure. We can also showcase fine art, which we do in this building uh, often and continually. So on this second floor, I, I wanted to take some time to point out again the, re the repetitive nature. Uh, we've got the, the, the four big uh, light fixtures, the square themselves, they're set into a square in the square uh, atrium of sorts uh, that comes up only interrupted by the, stair the stairwells. The squares on the ceiling, once again, on, on, uh, above the columns, the concentric squares. Uh, talk a little bit more about the artist, Edward Durrell Stone. So it was said that when he came to Grand Island in 1960, he was captured by this place, particularly the Platte River, as well as center pivot irrigation, if you can imagine that. Um, I wonder how much of that is lore, of course, because Edward Durrell Stone's architecture, whether it be the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., whether it be the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, the Stewart Museum here in Grand Island, Nebraska, 
or the museum in, or the embassy, excuse me, in New Delhi, India, all have very similar feels to them. And it's like an artist. Uh, when you look at a Van Gogh, you can almost say, okay, Starry Night. I know Starry Night is a Van Gogh. I can recognize another Van Gogh because of those same elements that I see in it. Edward Durrell Stone is exactly that way. When you see one of his pieces of architecture, you never forget it. And so that is why you should come to this particular building and experience it, encounter it. He was a true artist. In fact, he never finished college. Although he went to, started out uh, in Arkansas, going to um, University of Arkansas, went, tried Harvard for a while, tried MIT, never finished architecture school, but became one of the most iconic architects, American architects of our time. Uh, and so visiting this building, you really get a feel for his artistry, his genius, uh, his true effort to make uh, a structure, a piece of art, not just a place that can house things. And so um, the store building really is, it's been called the, the gem of the prairie. From above, it actually looks like a diamond. It looks like a, a, a gem sitting on the prairie. And if you come visit us here, we welcome you with open arms uh, to this place. We, we would love to give you a tour of this structure, but I want you to keep your eyes open when you walk through it because you will cap, catch all these little things that we've been talking about and what makes this such an iconic structure. Welcome to the South Gallery here in the Leo Stewart Building. This is our gallery where we showcase fine art and our current exhibition is a showcase of Nebraska artists who have supported us in the past. A magnificent exhibition and we always have fine art here in the Leo Stewart Building, not only to enjoy but also to purchase. So I want to spend a little bit of time talking specifically about this building and once again as it relates to international style architecture. One of the noted features of international style architecture is this interruption in the facade or in this building of what we would call ribbon glass or ribbon windows. Very thin, uh, long, tall uh, panes of glass to kind of not only almost break up the, the, the structure itself from the outside, but also give an appearance of another plane, another plane on the facade. And you'll see that from the interior throughout, once again, not quite as utilitarian as probably you would want in a museum or an, out, or an art gallery because it takes up wall space. But when you look at it from the perspective of architecture, really gives us this feeling of vibrancy and, and light and I find it refreshing even in an industrial building that you can have these elements of the natural light coming in and as you walk through this uh, wonderful iconic structure uh, designed by Edward uh, Durrell Stone you will encounter these ribbon windows throughout and you really have great access to v wonderful views and vistas as you as you gaze out of them. In 2015, the building underwent a, a renovation by um, BBH Architects uh, out of Lincoln, Nebraska. They did a wonderful job restoring uh, the Edward Durrell Stone vision. Uh, it had been many years, as I said, he designed this building in 1960, you know, it was being built in 1963. It was dedicated about 1967. Um, so there was a, a significant amount of time that had passed since we had this building refurbished and BVH did a tremendous job. They actually won an award from a, a noted organization that specializes in modernism architecture uh, to say that they really held true to Edward Durrell Stone's vision in keeping this, uh, this wonderful structure a, a very classic example of international style architecture, which frankly they're disappearing, it's disappearing from the world and, and we are um, a, a place that you can come and you can experience this wonderful architecture firsthand, understand what you're seeing, note the artistry, and understand that everything is connected uh, that we do from architecture to artwork to social times, political happenings, economic happenings, and it, it provides a timeline for us 
that really is a timeline of humanity. And this building itself is an artifact on these grounds and it is meant to be experienced as such. So glad that you uh, spent some time with us.